phone call from a uh, big, oh. big superstar. Big, big star. Big, big star. Hey, is this uh, side? This is sideshow name Dan Strait. Is this Alex Holy Cross? Alex. This is. Hey, you rat hey, bastard. Man, you rat bastard. You rat bastard. <laughs> I want to say. I want to say some horrible things about Stevie Breer, but get it. But get he it. helped me out. I, could, I couldn't find your phone number. I somehow deleted it in my text, so I had to ask Stevie to send it to me. <laughs> so. I mean, we're equal opportunity dissers, man. Yeah, if yeah. If you want to diss too, like whatever for like ratings, people listening, <laughs> diss away, my friend. I'm just kidding. Don't do it, you rat bastard. Okay. Then you would be a rat bastard if you did that. <laughs> right. I'll tell you some. I'll will tell you some funny. So, have you guys ever? Do you guys ever watch the show True Detective? I I think I've watched it once or twice in the past. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I you know I'm like I'm a huge Breaking Bad fan, and oh. break, well, Breaking Bad like basically ruined cinema and television for me because now I hate everything <laughs> because because Breaking Bad was so good, but. I finally got into. I, I took a recommendation and actually watched the first season of True Detective. And if anyone, for people who've seen it, there's a one of the best episodes is where there's like a there's a tent revival church, mm-hmm. and and it was amazing. It was such good acting and such good cinematography. But then um, the first thing I said when I saw it, I was like, I was like. Well, goddamn, these guys ripped off the gypsies video. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's no hilarious. Shit. I, was, I, I was like, these these bastards at Miramax are, are, are freaking taking cheese out of the gasoline gypsy's pocket. <laughs> oh, that's right. funny, man. Bastard. I think it's funny, too. You know, I mean, I, I we now we have something that's totally in common there, Alex. I'm a huge uh, uh, Breaking Bad uh, fan. I, I fell in love with that, and my girlfriend and I, we watched it. We binge-watched that thing. Uh, I mean, I think we've got the entire season done in just like a few weeks. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> was... and, well, at this point, like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, like, ASMR videos online. No, like the, no. Well, they're just, like, videos that, like, you watch and they chill you out. It's like it's like video, it's like um, Xanax in video form, you know? Wow. So, like, Bre- Breaking Bad, to me, has just kind of become, like, like, yoga or meditation like i honestly just i have it on in the background like people would smooth jazz you know like i look <laughs> I, I, I i've seen it so many times that i'm i just i'm so in love with that universe that Ben yeah. Gilligan created that i just put it on and it's just have it in the background it's just it's just like burning sage or whatever the hippies do that chills them out, you know. Dude, I, I love that. You know what? It's uh, same with, uh, you know, we got done with Breaking Bad, and then we were like, what else do we watch? You know, like, I mean. There's we, nothing. There yeah, nothing. there's nothing else. There's we, nothing we, we've been Breaking trying Bad. to get into uh, Better Call Saul, you know, because it, it kind of, it's like a prequel to Breaking Bad, actually. Well, but the thing with Better Call Saul is that it's like, it, look, anyone who tells you that Better Call Saul is as good to say that Better Call Saul is as good as Breaking Bad is to lie. Oh no, but, it's not. It's but, not. But 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 it does, you know. Forgive the pun. It 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 kind of it feeds that addiction. It it <laughs> kind of gives you it gives you that fix that us Breaking Bad fans have been dying to get since yeah. the show ended. You know, and so it's but but I know exactly what you mean, dude. It's like Breaking Bad, like. I remember back when back when I was in college, I was watching The Walking Dead. Oh. This was like this was my last year of college, and I was watching The Walking Dead. And I was like, I was like, God damn, this show is fantastic. It's yeah. just it's so good, and the acting is fantastic, and the action, and the, the suspense, and just the story building, the cinematography is amazing. And then my buddy tells me to watch Breaking Bad, and I watched it one night, and I was like, Walking Dead. <laughs> Who cares about The Walking Dead? I hope Rick dies I, soon. I, yeah, I hate The Walking Dead. Breaking Bad literally <laughs> ruined everything for me. Uh, until honestly, you could get, if uh, if you like Breaking Bad, though, honestly, watch the first season of True Detective. It is some of the most 
compelling media I've ever seen. I'm going to have to check that out now, man. That's going to be it. my, that's, you have seen, have you seen True Detective there, Dan? Yeah, have I've you, seen, I've oh, seen it. Oh, have you? Okay, I'm going to have to watch that. It's, it's it, good. It, I mean, it's not like a reality show, is it, or anything like that? Or is, No, God, no. Oh, oh good, thank God. I mean, holy, some holy, of the scenarios could be crow, based in no. reality. Okay, all right. Well, I'm going to have to check that out, man. Uh, True Detective. Babe, if you're watching right now, uh, make sure that we uh, we start watching True Detective. <laughs> um, Alex Holy Cross uh, suggested, too. This is, a, this is a recommended show from... That's uh, for all you guys, too. Superstar! And I, and I hate everything. Except Breaking <laughs> Bad. <laughs> well, you, do, you, you don't hate everything. You love your dog. I mean, that, that, uh, that English oh, bulldog. Oh, dude, dude. Oh, oh, Jay. Oh, Django? Yeah, he's sitting next to me in the studio right now. Oh, he's a puppy puppy. Every time I see the videos of him, I'm just like, I just want to grab him and smush his face, man. He's just he's guys, adorable. Did you guys see the video of him coming on stage with us at St. Andrew's Hall? What? No, really? Did oh, he really? We got to see that. If you go if you go to, um, maybe maybe this is one of the videos you can play. We Our, our tour promo video. Uh-huh. You know, the, our, our upcoming tour, our banjo player, Jake, who ma the, the mastermind, he um, he made a tour promo video for us. And included in that video is um, footage we, um, from our show at St. Andrew's Hall. And I actually, Django came up on stage with us for the entire show. Holy shit, not. really? Dude, we had, we had Dude, I think, awesome. we had like 700 people in this venue and played in 90, like a headline an hour and a half set. And Django was on stage with us the entire time. He would like, oh. he would kind of walk around and he would pass out. Like he slept for all of Berman. He kind of, he, <laughs> he, he, he woke up for uh, he woke up during hurricane for a bit and went and drank some water then passed back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude. He is the coolest dog too. There's a, him, I'm yeah. trying to remember the video now of him riding in the car. He was, uh, what, what? Oh yeah, that was, that was the something else video. He was, yes. and I were cr cruising in that little bit. <laughs> that clown car side. and he's just got his arm like laying there like yep i'm uh i'm cool man check me out i'm a good dog <laughs> dude, dude the, the funniest thing is we after we pull after we pulled him on stage at saint saint andrew's hall so that was the sh that was the tour kickoff right uh -huh, we, cool. we did we did like a three-week tour and you know went all the way from um you know from detroit our kickoff show down to play that uh that cruise ship, the the uh, Rock Legends cruise that we played. Right, right, um, cool, man. And um, but it was funny because we pulled him up on stage, and then it, there was video surfaced online, just bootleg video from the show. And then every single city, like every city that we played, at least a, like a group of people would come up to me and be pissed off that Django wasn't there. <laughs> they're like, well, they're. They're like, where's the where's the goddamn where's, bulldog? Where's the mascot for the band? <laughs> yeah. We need the band the mascot, man. Like we're here. Oh. <laughs> People wanted to see him more than they wanted to see me. And I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, People great, love man. dogs, man. Yeah, they love the puppies, dude. If you can I mean... incorporate a dog in your band, which you have now. I mean, look what happened with Sublime and Lou Dog. That's I mean, exact. That's it. Exactly. Incorporate it, man. People love dogs. I mean, they're going to come to see the dog, dude. You need to <laughs> teach him how to sing or do something for the band. That'd be even better. Well, the thing, I mean, the thing is, is he's with me literally 24-7, 365. So it's like the only time I don't have him is when I'm on the road. And I'm trying to remedy that situation. It's just, you know, bulldogs have a short palate. They have trouble breathing. And it's like I was getting pretty nervous during the show that he was going to overheat. Yeah. And plus, he literally... At, at one point, dude, there was like 700 people at Ooh. that tour kickoff, and everyone was awesome. chanting Django. And he's, you know. See? He's, you know what you need to do, bro? You need to put, what? like, tie a drumstick to his, his tail or something and put a little drum <laughs> by him, you know, and, like, let him do a little, get him all excited and, and like, let him do a beat. And then well, you guys dude, go he, off he, that, make a recording of it. Well, I mean, dude, he's a damn dog, and he's on stage. And there's uh, um, okay. Let me add, look, okay. Let me set the scene for you. Okay. Imagine, imagine you're a dog, <laughs> and imagine you don't know the English language very well, but right. you do know. But but you do. You are pretty versed in one corner of the English language. That's your name. You know what the person who owns and food you products that screams at you every day. Right. So imagine 
you get on a stage as a dog, and there's 700 people shouting the one word you know at you. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Talking and about I, confusion. I didn't even think about why he was breathing so hard, and I started ruminating on it after after the show, and I was like, oh, yeah, if I was a dog and someone was 700 people were indiscriminately shouting the one word I know at me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, could see, I could see why his heart rate was a little elevated. And that's where the drum comes in, man. <laughs> you know, just like t- tape a recorder to his nose or something. So when he's... Like, wee, wee, wee. You know, people start screaming his name, they'll know when he's excited, you know? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But you know what? He still, he still holds it together. I mean, there's 700 people calling his name, and he's just like, I'm gonna stay up here. Dude, and he, my guy. Dude, he was cooler. He was cooler than I was. I mean, he was <laughs> cool as he was cool as a cucumber. I was a little. That was our first show in a while. Well, I, I kind of walked. I walked out, got a little tongue tied. I wish him the best. I hope. I hope he blows up, man. Oh man, yeah, Django's a great puppy, man. I wanted. Okay, now enough about dogs. Um, let's get to the uh, the band. Okay, the band is what we want to talk about. We want to know what's going on with Native Howl. Uh, what's What's coming up this uh, summer? Let's yeah. keep talking about True Detective and both <laughs> Come on, man. Okay, let's talk about that. Yeah, I'll listen with the realness. Yeah, I used to have an American bulldog myself. Uh, he was a good really? boy. Yeah, he was. Uh, his name was uh, Mogarath. I named him. I named him after the uh, the troll that's on uh, Spiderwick Chronicles. Um, so, uh, for whatever you reason, you also had a dog named Rasputin, and I had a dog named Rasputin Dude. too. Dude. Rasputin. Okay, so let me tell you something. So when we were, so when we, and I've got a. Are you going to give us some rat Houston? What, what do well, they call him? Rat Houston. Rasputin. Rasputin right? history here, dude. Well, that was the that, that was the Russian um, insurrector of the of the of the Russian czar. Correct? Yes. Yes. Yep. Well, okay. So let me. The weirdest thing, and I'll try to be brief because um, I'm go I'm very tangential today. But <laughs> so when we. So we're playing, we're playing that that cruise ship. You know, we did the Rock Legends cruise, right? And it was it was so weird. When I'm on the road, you know, I'm doing music for a living. So I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I, I do listen to you guys, and I listen to a lot of, um, you know, like any other white guy in his twenties. I listen to a bunch of Rogan. Um, <laughs> but then, but um, I listen to you guys. Ever listen to Har- Dan Carlin, Hardcore History? No, I haven't checked that one out. Oh man! Well, it, 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 check out Hardcore History. Hardcore History, um, it's really good. It, it's just like a really in-depth history podcast. The guy basically just reads like he'll do a podcast on World War II, and he'll read twenty-five books, and then do a four-hour podcast on it. Oh wow! But anyway, wow, that's awesome, man. Um, impressive. You, Very impressive. But anyway, I was listening. I was listening to a series he did called um, Blueprint for Armageddon, and it was about World War One, right? Mm-hmm. And I and I was really deep down the you lost him. Oh. It was an entire episode on Rasputin, and I was absolutely smitten. Like, I was engulfed in the story. Yeah. And, and remember, I'm on a cruise ship in the middle of the fucking ocean on the way to Mexico, <laughs> and I'm just, and I was literally, I was, I was in the sauna of the gym on this cruise ship. Like, I was in the sauna in my boxers listening to this guy talk about Rasputin, and it was, it was enthralling, you know, like I was... And then we and then we play our show um, on the cruise ship, and then um, some lady comes up to me, and she tells me that her and her friends have dubbed a nickname for me. They they said they called me Seizure Rasputin. Uh, really? Seizure Rasputin. Seizure Rasputin. No, se- seizure like epilepsy. Yeah, right, seizure, right. seizure. Yes. Yeah, se- Yes, yes, that was that, and this was, and this was literally six hours after I found out who the fuck Rasputin was. Oh my gosh! Yeah, what a weird world. It, it, it was, it was, it was the strangest moment ever. Like I, like six hours after I found out who this crazy insurrectionist in the Russian government was, someone tells me that because of how crazy I am on stage, that they call me Seizure Rasputin. <laughs> And, and I was, and I was like, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> Seizure, Rasputin. Is, it, is that all you wanted to say? All let right, me, let yeah. me give you some. Yeah, re- yeah, let like, me give you some yeah, religious yeah. advice. Yeah. No, I mean, 
<laughs> you know, I'm, I'm used Shaking. to like the normal comparisons. I'll get compared to like you know whoever the hell they they'll compare me to different celebrities or whatever, and that's fine. But seizure rest, cute, and I will say that 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 really. <laughs> That threw me for a loop. Some silly ladies That's there, yeah, yeah. I, I think they had a little bit too much off the bar that night, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've never even seen a picture of Rasputin. I don't know what he looks like. I don't know if it was a compliment or a... I mean, the whole seizure part, I don't think that could have been <laughs> Maybe you look like Rasputin, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I Actually, I've seen a lot of photos of Rasputin. I used to be very into the uh, the story of Rasputin. Well, I mean, I've listened it's, to it. I've heard it. He was like a monk that gave religious advice to a czar. Oh, yeah, he gave religious Russian advice. Czar, and, he and, actually, he healed the czar. The czar had... Um, the, the czar's wife. The czar's wife. I, I think it was the child, if I believe right. Had, yeah, um, you're right. Yep. Yep. The, right. the, the child had a uh, blood disorder. Uh, he was yeah. he was uh, hemo, yep. hemo something, and and somehow he, oh, it, was, it was hemophilia. Hemophilia. Yep. Boom. And he uh, he healed the child. The child had gotten right. a bruise, and Rasputin by, healed the fucking child, which well, is incredible. By sheer, by sheer tyranny of will. Yes. Yep. And then they they was, tried to kill him. They couldn't even kill him. They they got him drunk. Dude, they fed him. They, dude. They, it, it, dude. His. Dude, the the story of him, he is the most like he's the most resilient son of a bitch. He, he would I've die. Ever, dude, <laughs> they tried they, to kill they, him. Dude, someone tries to feed him cyanide, and he keeps he, he drinking it. He pours more wine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. the guy is amazing. And then, and then the guy who poisons who poisons him is free, runs upstairs to the other conspirators, and he's freaking out. He's like, the dude won't die. <laughs> so so that so the dude just grabs a pistol. And run downstairs, right. runs downstairs, and fires one off in him. Then runs and falls over, and it didn't kill him. No, nope, it didn't out. kill him. He ended up in a river. I, I think. And, kill. <laughs> yeah, they ended up actually having to. Uh, uh, they they took chains, wrapped chains around them, and then threw them into the river. Right, and I don't even think that yeah. killed him right away. I. Well, I think that even when he bobbed up, they thought he was, you know, still living. And based on what, based on what Hellboy says, he, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's hard to kill a determined Russian. Yeah. Is what that is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's the wildest story ever, man. It, it was. Fat. It is certainly it's one fat. of those. And one of those the fact funny. that I, and the fact that I was jaw dropped by it, and then six hours later, some, you know, <laughs> half in the back, one on the top of a big boat, tells me I look like Caesar Rasputin. I'm yeah. like, that's weird. I'm like, all right, all that's right, weird, dude. thank you. It's a sign. Holy it's a fucking sign, man. It's got to be some sort of a weird uh, world sign. I don't know. It's that's... a weird sign that I need to go into into blood medicine. Yeah. <laughs> find a cure for hemophilia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, well, you know what? Uh, before we we get off the phone with you, man, because I you know I don't want to take up too much of your time. Superhuman rock star over here, uh, Rasput Caesar Rasputin, uh, Alex Holy Cross. <laughs> don't, right. do not, Caesar Rasputin. Do not make that synonymous with me. <laughs> Aww, well, too late. You've done um, it. You uh, your your video for uh, Thunderhead closing in on a million views, dude. What does that feel what? like? What? What? Well, it's crazy because the the thing is, is that uh, that's the YouTube video, but our ads, the ad on Facebook has sixteen million. Oh really? And, yeah, the ad on Facebook has 16 million, and then there's the other derivatives of it that have 4 million, and then our Into the Darkness, all the ads from that have over 4 million. So it's like uh -huh. we on Facebook we've racked up, I think, over 30 million views, wow. but the YouTube one holds the most. Wow, holds the most weight, and we're and we're we're got really a, excited. Got a really, lot of followers. Really, yeah, man. I mean, we're we're super we're super grateful, and it's. You know how it is across the screen, but it's it's really um, it's really humbling when you go out and actually when we tour. We did over forty states last year, and just to go out and actually see that these are real people and have real crowds at shows and people coming up to us and talking to us and being supportive, it's like you know it'll bring a tear to your eye. It's really yeah. humbling, man. It's been a, it's been an amazing experience, and we're we're um, we've got some big things in the works. We well, we've, we've got. We've got a song. We've got a music video that we're shooting soon. I can't tell you exactly what it is yet. I'll tell you guys off air. But um, it's a we're doing a mashup song between uh, two of our favorite tunes. Um, nice. I'm really excited for that. Um, but beyond that, one thing that I that I was uh, stoked to tell you guys about is um, this Friday we're actually playing the national anthem before a Chicago Bulls game. Wow, dude! Oh, you Holy guys, shit! Huh? You're gonna be at a Chicago Bulls game? 
Yeah, they're playing. Uh, they're playing wow. the 76ers, which I'm. Uh, I'm a little. I'm a little out of touch with sports, and I was like, "Is Allen Iverson?" <laughs> 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 like, if, like honestly, if someone asked me to name like one, you know, name a few Pistons players, I'm like, uh, "Yeah, Chauncey, Rip, uh, <laughs> Isaiah Thomas, um, Bill yeah. Lambeer, <laughs> right?" Uh, <laughs> I and I don't go as far back as the Bad Boys, but I'm like, you know, oh, I'll, I'll, that, that's I'll the best say, era, man. Yeah, that's Rashid. us. Yeah, Rasheed Wallace, Ben Wallace. I'm yeah, like, is Chuck still on the team? No, he's been retired for ten years. But yeah, we're 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 doing a uh, bluegrass slash thrashgrass version of um, the Star Spangled Banner before Dude. before uh, the Bulls and the Seventy Sixers uh, play ball at the United Center in Chicago this Friday. The game starts at eight o'clock, so I reckon we'll be doing the national anthem about 7 30 no shit wow, so are you guys going to be on national television then too i don't i, I don't know i i don't know if the game's going to be televised because it's not okay. a playoff game um it, it it's definitely going to be on like nba tv on like comcast and direct tv and all the you know all the sub whatever's all the, right. all the derivatives but i'm not sure if it's going to be on actual cable but regardless there's going to be like over 20,000 people watching. Oh, and there's going to be at least 10,000 people with their phones out recording you because that's like a, I mean, to, to play the national anthem outside of its regular, you know, sound, you know, I mean, that's, right. that's gotta be, that that's like a one that's in a, cool. once in a million chance, I think, you right, know? It is. Right. No doubt. No, I'm, people I'm, want traditional. I'm, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's the thing that's making me nervous is because I, I'm so emotionally invested in the song. It means so much to me. But we are kind of putting our own spin on it. But um, that's good. That's yeah, good. It, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's not going to sound like the Beyonce version or whatever. That right. I, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but but it's like you think about like you think about like Hendrix Hendrix's version, and then uh, the person who played it on the same date last year at United Center was Zach Wild. Um, oh, so wow. it's like you know you know his version is is crazy. It's like he plays the melody, and then he's just as he does, just destroying, just laying waste on the guitar, just ripping amazing solos in between the right in, in between the, the stanzas, if you will. So right, I, right. I'm really excited. I, I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. Um, I'm not nervous for the amount of people, but just literally walking out into the middle of a stadium with just Oof. a guitar and a bass and playing a song you didn't write is is kind of nerve wracking. But I am super honored and super super excited and a little nervous but that is cool I, well, man. hey you know what make it your own you know you love the, oh, we, the natural the yeah. natural anthem you want to do something that you're proud of make it your own and people are going to respect that because they love it too man so they're going to feel what you love you know and hey right. don't forget to uh share this this uh video man you got all those subscribers you got all those <laughs> followers dude share this man we want everyone to watch oh. us too Oh, I definitely, I definitely will. I will definitely <laughs> give this, I will give this a share for sure, my friend. Well, you got a, you got a hell of a story on here, you know. Absolutely. I mean, you got. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of your fans that do not know about some of the they stories that we just chatted about. This one. Yeah, this is yeah. a, this is a cool one, man. Well, I uh, did, dude. Uh, thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your day here, Alex, and uh, and calling us up. You know, I mean, we. I'm a huge fan of you guys. I, I've been stalking you and watching you behind the scenes vicariously, man. And I just, I, I'm amazed at how much the. I, I'm amazed at like the uh, the way that the the real world out there is like really accepting of like your guys' style of music because it's not regular bluegrass it, it, this is thrash grass it's thrash metal meets bluegrass you know which is exactly it's just incredible I, dude i i think there's a i think there's an, a niche um market of people who just like the same thing with the gasoline gypsies i think there's a niche market of people who you know that the, that the music industry the 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 slick back slick back hair in suede suits would like us to believe that the, that these people don't exist but I, contrary to to popular belief i think there's a overwhelming majority of people out there who want real new innovative and just organic true art artful music and it's yeah. out there there's I mean, in every state, dude, all I do is tour around and I just see bands that open up for us and there's 
so many good artists out there, but you know the radio or Sirius XM or or Spotify, what they're promoting, all they want you to think is that it's just cookie cutter, three and a half minute music. Still, those days are gone, man. Yeah, yeah. those those days are over. It's a grassroots movement now, and no. you know bands bands like us just have have a statement, have something to say, and just want our fans to have fun at shows. I mean, at the end of the day, that's all. We just want people to. We just want people to when they come see us play live for an hour. That's what I say at the end of every show. I just say I hope that I hope that you could forget about politics and paying your bills and all that bullshit for an hour, hour and a half, and just have a good time. <laughs> that's you know? all, man. Hell yeah, dude! That is a, that's a great point right there, dude. Yeah, dude. Well, thank you, Alex, so much. Uh, tell Django we said hi. You know, pet him and uh, and, yeah. and be like, yeah, I just got up. Them. Daddy right just got off the phone with a couple numb nuts up in Traverse City. <laughs> 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 Time to wash you, buddy. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, hey, you know what? Here's another thing that we've been doing re- uh, lately. Maybe if you could do this really quickly for us, it'd be great because we're using these uh, for um, we're, we're using these little uh, clips to uh, make a bigger uh, montage of different uh, huge musicians that are coming up. Um, is there any chance that we could get you to say, "Hey, this is Alex Holy Crow." Us, and you're watching the South of the Strait show. Hey, I'll do a tag for you. No cool. Problem. Cool. Go. Let me uh, give me uh, give me the script again. Hey, hey, just say hey. This is Alex Holy Cross from the Native Howl, and you are watching the South of the Strait show. South of the Strait show, not podcast. Got it. Yep. Okay. I'm Alex Holy Cross of the Native Howl, and you're listening to the South of the Straits show. Yeah, brother. I love it. Yes. Love it, man. All right. Thank you Boom. so much, Alex. You take care. And, uh, dude, uh, just keep on being awesome because you're fucking incredible, dude. <laughs> Thanks for having me, fellas. I really appreciate it. All right, bro. See you later. Take care. Yes. Talk soon. Bye. See you, man. Dude. Dude, what a trip, man. Dude. What a cool story. Dude, that was some that was some great me- You know what I was thinking? Stories. Like, during, I mean, during, when just... we were talking about Rasputin, I was thinking, man, you know, he healed that bruise. Maybe he had the, the Tataloo formula. Ah, <laughs> he was using the Tataloo. And, and to them, it was magical. That had to you have know, been what it was, it was like dude. About beyond its time. That's know? right. Yeah, he was using Tataloo to uh, heal people.